I'm Steve, and I run a small website called the Never Ending Projects List. Most of you watching this video are probably watching it on that site. But for those of you that are just stumbled across this on YouTube, it's just my personal site where I share a bunch of the various projects that I work on. A lot of those projects center around 3D printed fishing lures, and I'm constantly being asked how I design them, how do I make the 3D printed stencils for them. So after many requests to do tutorials, I'm going to finally break down and do a couple of videos that show the whole design process, making them, painting them, basically start to finish. This whole video thing is new to me though, so this first video is just going to be me getting my feet wet, figuring out the filming and editing process. In this video, I'm going to be making this 3D printed frog from start to finish. I only touch a little bit on the design portion of this lure, but in the following videos I do, I'll go through every aspect of the design. This video is kind of long, so if you get bored, feel free to fast forward. And if you're not entertained, just click that X up in the corner there and move along. Anyway, let's get into this. This is the basic shape of the frog lure. It was done in Fusion 360 scope environment. I would have shown the whole process, but I really don't know what I'm doing, so it was a long and boring process. Overall, it came out pretty good for my second attempt in sculpt. It's not perfect, but Hey, looks like a frog. I'm actually not that confident in Fusion 360, so I'm going to jump over to SolidWorks to finish the rest of this. Okay, now that I've imported the step file into SolidWorks and converted it to a solid part, I'm going to start by uh, making a line, and this is going to be where I cut it in half. Basically, we're going to make a new plane on this line. Uh, I always got to figure out this second reference part, but I got it right this time. I am not actually going to cut it in half at this point. I'm just going to use the section view to visualize it. First thing we're going to do is uh, create the area for the front tie-on. And I already know the dimensions of everything, so I'm just going to fire through this. Basically making a couple of circles. These are 0.20 in diameter. And they are about 0.243 for the hook hangers I use. This center box is uh, 0.10. This is all in inch. This is the part where you fast forward if you're bored. There we go. I basically use the TLR method at this point. And that looks about right. Now we're going to add the hook hangers in the rear using the same process. The other one's pretty easy. I'm just going to mirror it along that center line I made. Next, I am going to extrude cut this out. I'm actually going to use a mid plane because it's going to cut the top and bottom. And that's about 0 0.06 of an inch, I think. Yep. Next, these are going to be for alignment pinholes, and they also hold the hook hangers in. Just, uh, it's about a 0 0.08 because I'm using a piece of filament as the alignment pin. I'm going to cut these out to a depth of, I think, 
like uh, point twenty overall. But again, it's cutting the top and the bottom at the same time. See, I don't have a lot of room, so they're a little short, but they work. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, make some holes for weights. I'm going to have four holes. I'm probably not going to need that many, but for prototyping, it's good to have a little extra if you need it. Again, just using the T-layer method. Cut them to a depth of 0.27 just so I can use a quarter inch ball if I have to. Definitely don't think I'll need that much weight, but again, good to have the room if you need it. This is where I'm actually going to cut the lure in half. So basically, I just trim the top half off and save the bottom then I'm going to go back and edit the cut so it cuts the bottom half off and save the top everything's looking good at this point I'm just going to jump into assembly make sure everything lines up correctly it shouldn't or it should but I just double check just to be safe that maybe there we go oh, wrong one and everything looks good now it's time to add some detail Okay, we're not going to add too much detail, just uh, eyes and ears on this. So, first thing I'm going to do is add another plane using the line again. very proficient. I actually thought I was going to have to add two planes, but I forgot about mirror and the extrude, so I'm not even going to use that. Find my second reference. Usually that takes me a couple tries to get the right one. Right about here is where I figure out I don't need to do that. Helps if I select the right plane. Do a normal two just to get it to the right angle. And we're gonna do a sketch for the eye. I'm just guessing at eye size right now. I'm I'm gonna paint these on anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I do decide to make them a little smaller. I'm just uh, estimating the position at this point. And we're going to go up and extrude the cut into the body. Again, just guessing at the depth, but that looks good. I'm just going to mirror this so it takes effect on the other side too. As soon as I figure out what to use to mirror it. There we go. And I'm 
gonna add a fillet to it just to smooth it out a bit. And I'm gonna decide to play with the position a little bit. Yeah, that looks a little better. Maybe not. How about right there? All right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go in and add the ear. Just working off the same plane I made before. Just going to sketch a random circle-ish kind of thing. Using That was the spline tool, by the way. And then I can go back and adjust it to... Whatever looks good. And just going to extrude cut. That's a little too shallow. Go back. Once again, I'm just going to mirror it. And this one's going to get a good size fillet. want it really just like smooth, not a hard edge. Close enough. It actually ended up being a little small, but I can always go back and fix that later. That's the joys of 3D printing. Easy to change. Gonna throw in one more plane here to work off of. This one's gonna be for the nostrils. Yeah, see, I never get it right usually on the first try. Got lucky those last two times. There we go. Oh, nope, screwed it up. That's better. Again, gonna view normal too, just to get the right angle to work on. Somehow, I don't know why it's not working. One more time. There we go. Use some ellipses this time. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing. Draw a center line just to mirror my entry. Oops, I didn't actually draw the line. I could probably do it off a plane. Nope. Nope, there we go.
once again just to smooth out the edges and that's it I think I'm gonna call this one done for now okay next step is going to be turning these into an STL but first if you look they're not level so if I did that, did you just try to drop it on the printer bed? It wouldn't work too well. So I am going to start an assembly. Drop the top in. Make sure it's on float. Then we're going to select the front plane because I know that's my flat to my printer bed. And we're going to mate the bottom to the top plane. Now I like to have these going in the right direction, so I'm going to actually rotate this by delta Z, oops, not 290, 270. Okay. It's a little crooked, but so what I'm going to do is select the right plane, mate this little area that now it's straight all right so i'm going to fix this in place import the bottom and we're just gonna make sure that's floating we're gonna mate that to the other one actually want to go on the other way sure everything's line it up now that's lined up we're actually just going to delete those mates there and then just uh, move it with the triad move it over that's it save it as an STL now we just import it into the slicer. I'm using Simplified 3D. Just drop it on the bed. Make sure it actually sits flat. Check our process. I'm going to do this at 70%. I like it nice and solid. I'm using a 10 layer height for Four top layers, three bottom, three outlines. No support, no rafts. That's it. Prepare to print. Make sure everything looks good. See that big hollow section on top piece now. There's our weight holes and hook hangers. Everything looks good. Just save it and throw it to the printer. These are being printed on a Maker Gear M2. Here's a little quick little time lapse. I think it actually took between two and three hours. Now that we got this printed, the first thing we're going to do is clean up the area for the hook hangers. What I do first is I take a drill. This is a 1.8 millimeter, but a 564 is pretty close too. Just clean this up. I don't print with support, so they're a little a little weirder than normal, but I find it easier just to drill them out than actually clean up the tiny supports that it would do. After that, once that's done, take a razor blade, just level it out, clean all that garbage out. Might be a little bit of a elephant's foot, so I clean that up too. Take one of the little hook hangers. I get these on Amazon. I'll throw a link up. Hell's a lot easier to use these than bending wire. Next, I'm going to take a piece of filament. Make sure it fits in the holes. Let's clean that one up a little more. Put 
going to trim these. It's usually about 0.2 or so of an inch. I'm using this filament cutter I made just to make pins. It's got a little razor blade in there. Just chops them off. Pin goes in the hole. Oh, shit. Again. Let's see if the hook hanger goes in there and we're gonna test fit this. They don't really sit in there flush. You can take a lighter, just heat it up for a second and it'll kind of melt into place. It's pretty loose already though, so it's good. Looks pretty good. Next thing I'm gonna do is add some uh, weight. These are about 2.1, no, 0.218 little balls. Probably about a gram and a half of weight. This just helps it sit in the water correctly. Basically, you add the weight at the bottom and giant air packet in the air pocket in the top of this thing. So basically, at this point, I might get a little cleanup still, but at this point, it's a good time to test it. So what we're gonna do is just tape this together and uh, throw it in the test tank and see what, how it floats. To test the lure. I just use a little uh, scotch tape to hold it together while I'm dunking it in there. Normally I would just hang these off the back during testing, but I actually use the split rings this time because I actually want to drop this in there to make sure it floats right. As you can see, ass hangs down a little bit, which is perfect. A little more would be better, but when I put some feathers and stuff on those hooks, it might work better. But the big thing you want to make sure is this thing is going to actually flip over on itself, which it does. Okay, once I'm confident how this is going to float, I am going to glue it together. I am just using a super glue, or CA. I'm not going to try to pronounce what CA stands for because I can't. And this little bottle is just the accelerant. Instaset, I think this is made by Bob Smith Industries. I don't know, I've had this for 20 years. So, First thing we're going to do, put a little super glue on all the points. Just to hold the hook hangers in. easier to put the glue on this half now. Put a liberal amount. I'm gonna end up gluing myself to it, but that's okay. Line and pins are doing their thing, sort of. Basically, you squeeze this together. Wipe off any excess and then hit it with accelerant. It's going to basically instantly bond that. Got to get my paper towel. Hold on, I dropped it. If there's any gaps, I just come back in. Super glue. Could have actually left that gap in the front because that's the mouth. That would look cool, probably. Hit with accelerant again. Usually, I like 
to straighten all the hook anchors out while I'm at it. Then I'll go back and fill in that little gap. Paper towel gets a little crusty. it might look like a gap there but if you run your fingernail over it you can tell it's full or not that one apparently needs to be filled let's self do it next i take some uh 220 grit sandpaper and i sand the seam any gaps you can go back and fill them in this doesn't look too bad i am gonna finish cleaning this up off camera so you don't have to sit through 10 minutes of me sanding at this point after a little bit of sanding this is where we're at hold on a minute i gotta get some more light like i said real high value production here there's still some layer lines showing but there's two ways to build a lure to catch fishermen and to catch fish and I'm only trying to catch fish, so they don't care about layer lines. At this point, I'd probably hook it up and go toss it around a bit to see how it works, because it's only a prototype at this point, but uh, we're just gonna jump straight into paint here. Before we jump into paint, you gotta have your reference photo so you have something to work off of. Okay, we're gonna paint. I'm not much of an artist, so I usually follow some uh, YouTube tutorials. Jekyll424 has a great tutorial on painting frogs, and that's kind of what I'm going to go by. But Basically, we always start with white, nice base coat. Painting 3D lures is a little different because than normal blanks, because you kind of get the line, the layer line sometimes, but it'll fill in eventually. You put enough paint on there. You don't want to go too thick, though. Gonna be using a little yellow on the sides. Gonna keep the belly white though. Next, I'm using a little pearl lime green. Next, I mixed up a little detailed moss green, which is my favorite color. It's just a tiny bit of opaque white to make a like OD green, like Jekyll shows in her video. I'm trying to blend this in with the a lime green without overdoing it, which I usually do. I'll leave that little nose light though. That's how the reference photo looks. same time. Now I'm just going to darken up the back a bit with straight up mosh green. I'm going to darken up the, what will be the legs too because the material I'm using for the legs will be a darker green. 
try to get it to blend as much as possible. Not looking too bad. Okay, before I go any uh, farther with detail, I'm going to give this thing a quick coat of UV resin just to seal up what I've already done. Most people dip these things, but I don't have enough, so I'm just going to brush it on. That should be good enough. Into the chamber. spins around in my rotisserie drying UV rack for a half hour or so. We'll take a station break. All right, lights off, let's see. Pretty good. So the reason we did the clear coat is I am going to be using this stencil I cut out to put some spots on this thing and the clear coat will protect the other paint from the stencil. I learned that tip from Nate Marling, the man himself. So we are going to stretch this over here hopefully. Using tool is definitely easier. I'm spraying a detailed sepia. It's like a, so it's gonna be like some brown spots. Let's see what it looks like. Eh, not too bad. Just try to clean up this front a little bit. where it usually goes bad. Not too shabby. That's it. We're going to do the same thing on the top. First, we're going to add a little brown of the ears. Should have made those a lot bigger, but maybe next time. Spots on the back here. Gotta do something over here though. Paper is not the best stencil. Bad. Not too bad at all. Just gonna give me a little nice 
Pickles. For the ice, I'm going to be using this Dr. P.H. Martin's Copper uh, Ink Color. And we are going to be painting it on by hand. My shaky ass hands. Next, just going to add a little yellow. The stick ons are a hell of a lot easier. It's going to use a little black for the pupil. Kind of what I was going for. We're just going to highlight these ears. I just forgot about them. Not even a hint. Not bad. Is that all? I think I'm going to draw a mouth on them too. If I screw this up. Happy little frog, though. Bob would be proud. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. I screw anything else up. Actually, I'll make some more highlights because now I feel like I'm trying to catch fishermen. for those little uh, things out by his eyeball, but now I'm done. Seriously. One more round of clear coat. last thing that I forgot to do is dome the eyes. I usually do this before I clear coat the whole thing because the pocket that I cut out for the eyes keeps the drop of uh, resin in place. But I'm going to try to do it now and hopefully I don't screw this up. So just take a drop, put it on there, and put it in here. Got a little cardboard stand just to keep it level so it doesn't move. And I might as well turn this on for a bit. Okay, here it is after it comes out. See, you got a little bit of a dome, not huge, but it's enough to, give, it doesn't really show up on the camera, but it gives a depth for you, look where this side's kind of flat, because I haven't done that one yet. But overall, just adds a little bit, and, you know, especially if you're trying to catch fishermen and not fish. All right, I'm gonna do the other side and uh, go from there. So here's the finished body. Paint's done, clear coat's done, everything looks great. I'm happy with how it came out. Now, the last part is I got to make some legs. So, I got my uh, 
number six hooks here. Dug out my fly tie stuff. Picked up a couple of different things. It's a big bucktail and uh, what is this? Some flash. This is actually not a bad color. But I also picked up this jig, and I think I'm gonna cannibalize the skirt on this to try using that. So that's where we are. All right, I haven't done this in a while, but let me see if I can remember how to do this. Super glue time. So I did another one off camera because the camera was in the way with the flashing in the hair and it came out a lot better. This is kind of how I wanted it, just straight. So I think these are going to work better, but I'll try them both and see what they look like in the water. Here's the finished hooks. I think the ones with the buck hair and the flash are going to actually hold up better than the rubber skirt one. These probably get tore up if I actually ever catch anything on one of these. But now I'm just going to hook them up and uh, these are done. Well, here's the finished lure. All ready to be fished. I have a little concern about the hooks hooking up against each other, but we'll see what happens when I start throwing this thing around. But that's about it for this build. Except to get out there and cast it around. Oh, but wait, there's more. Pay separate processing and shipping, and you get two for the price of one. Okay, let's go fishing. That's not bad. Oh shit, I lost him. Man, that was like the third cast too. Well, it wasn't a real productive day. I only had three hookups, all bass, but they fell off. So I'm wondering if the leg hooks, you know, the decorations have something to do with that. I'll have to try some just uh, plain hooks and see if that changes anything next time. But overall, lure came out great. I think it looks good. Action's not bad. You can either just walk it right along the surface like a wake bait, or if you give it a good twitch, it almost acts like a popper. You can also like walk the dog with it too if you get the twitching right. I think I might make a few more versions of this. I might give it a full mouth and actually turn it into a popper. I think I'm going to do one with two belly hooks and maybe uh, grubs for legs and then also maybe a, a weedless one. Well, if you're still here, I just want to say thanks for watching and until next time.